perfect. And we're going to be painting this gorgeous, colorful, but simplistic hummingbird. And this inspiration could easily be done with acrylics, which is what we're using tonight. It could be done using watercolor too. And in my classes, I love to incorporate water. Um, water is a great way of playing with how, how light or how soft um, the tone of a color could be or the pigment could be. So tonight's class, we may play with painting this beautiful hummingbird in a lighter tone. So where you can see on this, there's some darker blues and there's some lighter blues. So you as the artist tonight, you can play with maybe adding more water and using a, maybe a watercolor technique, or you could use your white paint and you could create a lighter blue. So I'll be going through different options on what you can do along the way. But one of the things I always embrace in my classes is art, being an artist or even painting is a very personal thing. Um, and I know that, and we're each at different levels, even including myself and practice will allow you to improve, continue to improve and evolve as an artist over time. I am not perfect. I have just improved over the years. My skills are, you know, evolving just like yours. So I acknowledge that we're all at different levels and um, I want you to be you no matter you've painted before or you haven't. So that's the most important thing. <clears throat> all right. If you just joined us, you'll need a pencil tonight. So go hustle to a, a, the random drawer in your kitchen and go grab a pencil if you don't have one. Uh, or you might have an office and you might be really organized that might be there too. For me, I feel like I have a pencil in every other drawer <laughs> or a pen, I try anyways. Um, but we'll go ahead and begin. Um, for folks that are looking for the recording for tonight's class, go ahead and drop a chat in the chat window and I'll be sure to get you a recording of class, tonight's class. But without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. All right. If you have any questions along the way, please do not hesitate to ask. Um, I will ask that if you could please keep your, uh, your audio muted. Um, there's sometimes background noise that comes across. I just want to be polite and conscious of others. Um, if you do have a question, please feel free to unmute and ask at any time. Um, I will keep an eye on the chat window as well. But we're a very open uh open group here. So you can definitely unmute and ask questions. So don't worry about that. All right. So one of the things that I was doing before class started, and I was talking to some of the ladies and gents about this, is I was, I just grabbed a piece of paper and I was playing a little bit about this hummingbird shape, the shaping, right? And one of the things is if you had some time to play around with this, great. If not, we're going to do this next step together. So it's sometimes hard to see the pencil on my canvas. I'm gonna to try to get this really close so you can see it. But what we're gonna do with our pencils, and if anyone doesn't have a pencil, um, you can use like a light blue paint um, and you can use that to outline. If you wanted to use a pen, you could use a pen, but we're gonna just do some basic outlining of our bird first. So one of the first things is we're gonna keep the background, the white as the canvas. If after tonight's class, you wanted to like paint the whole background white, just to like change the texture, you can do that after tonight's class. Even if we have time throughout, you can, maybe we do that at the end. We kind of paint around our bird, but we're gonna do the, this hummingbird first. And what I want you to think about is the scale, the size of the hummingbird. Now, you might be inspired. I'm gonna do one single hummingbird and I'm gonna add these beautiful kind of colorful drips coming from it. And I'm gonna to try to do mine fairly big. So I want you to think about the size of your hummingbird. Now I like to use my hands as a guide. Imagine my hummingbird was the size of my hand. Imagine this top wing in the top corner came to up here. Maybe you make some guide marks. I just put a little mark up here on where the top of the wing is. You can start somewhere and maybe you put a mark on where your top wing is. Maybe it's here, maybe it's a little higher. That will help you figure out maybe how big you want my bird to be. Now, if I put a small dot up here for the wing, the wing is gonna be about four or five inches. So I want to make sure that all of my kind of properties are fairly aligned. So if this is the top of my wing and I use a dot, if you wanted to follow along with me, you could. <clears throat> Making a dot for that top wing. You can kind of come down for the wing, you cannot see this, let's see. I'm gonna to try to push down a little harder with my pencil. 
I'm going to come down for the wing. There you go. You can see that. And then the, you can kind of figure out where the top or the crown of the head is. And the wing can connect to the top of the head. And I can always bring my wing higher, but let's try to get that top wing in up here and the head. And the head is really easy. We're not going to worry about the beak for right now, but you can make the head come round around the head and it's going to kind of come straight down and it's going to curl. And then you can do the underside. So the neck and the body are fairly connected. And you can always change these shapes, right? That's why we're doing pencil. And then the neck and the body come down. So I'm really just doing the head shape and the wing. And you can always change the back of the neck. You can always change the head. That's where we have this tooling. And I'm pushing down pretty hard with my pencil, just so you all can see it. So the under, so I'm going around the top of the head. I'm going to add the beak here. So the the beak is really skinny. The end is like really really skinny. So if you wanted to do the the end of this beak or this nose, you can do that. You can kind of have it pointing up. You can have it curve a little bit. Art is always a little bit of an experiment, so it's okay to make lines and erase them. Okay, this is where we really just get to settle into the process. And drawing can be hard, so just be really nice to yourself along the way here. And then as we do the head and we do the underside, what's gonna happen next is this bird has two wings. So this is a really neat part. So if this big wing comes down here, this is the kind of the left, the right wing, the bird has a left wing. And the left wing is kind of, if you come down from this crest from the back of its neck to the wing, if you come down a little bit and go in, you can create another wing. And it kind of comes down and then it comes up. Look at that, I'm creating a wing, just a little, I'm creating a little, it's like a half an inch gap between the neck coming up to the back wing and down. And I'm creating another wing. And this wing, it's actually gonna be a little, um, it's gonna be a little bit more further in than this back wing. So if the back wing comes out here, the, this, this wing on the left is gonna come in a little bit. And these wings are going to have little feathers. So we're not going to worry too much about the feathers right now. But if you want to just give it a little bit of edging, I'll push in a little bit harder. And then you can just carry this down. And we're just giving this bird a little bit of a front wing. And then if you wanted to bring this back wing down and tuck it in behind, you can. So I basically brought the top wing down and it just did some like little waves just to kind of give a little bit of like feather like. And then I just rounded this bottom wing and carried this down. And you can look at the picture for reference. Again, you can play with the shape of the head. Maybe my head would be a little higher. You could make some eraser marks. And you can see my bird is pretty big and I centered it right in the middle of my canvas. How's everybody doing? So we should have two wings. Take your time. If you have any extra eraser marks, you can go in and erase those now. Take a couple deep breaths to settle in to tonight's class. I teach a few mindfulness techniques along the way, more from the artist perspective of obviously <laughs> reminding you to breathe is important. Sometimes we hold our breath because we're taking something, we're so intense and so focused. So I'll remind you to breathe, but also just to reflect on your work along the way, to lean back in your chair, just to see how your shapes are. <clears throat> 
And it's okay to make modifications at this stage. Don't worry. Drawing can be hard. That's why we're taking a few minutes up front to do this. And the next part's kind of cool. So if anybody wants to grab one of those paint brushes that I sent you, we're gonna do kind of the bum or where the tail feathers will curl under. So what we're gonna do is if anybody takes this paintbrush and you place it along the backside of your bird's neck, we're basically gonna have the body come out directly underneath it. So I'm using this as a straight mark to say, okay, this is where the, the bird's body is. And look at that, it comes out nice and even. Imagine if I draw a line that connects the back of the head down through the wings, it's gonna to connect to the back side of the body. This is really cool. And then you're basically gonna curl this under and we're gonna give the bird some feathers under here. So there's basically gonna be a lot of little feathers. We'll do some more texturing, but this whole bottom side is all gonna be rounded feathers. And on the bottom side of this bird here are gonna be tail feathers. So there is in the inspiration, there's one, two, three, four, five, and then it ends with six. So what you can do is from the underside of the belly, you can kind of come out to the left and you can do a rounded tail feather. And I'm just gonna do some nice rounded feathers. They can be all different shapes and sizes. And we're gonna add more detail in. So don't worry too much about this. But I'm really just creating the underside of the bird. And I may want to come a little further down. So this is where you can kind of extend down. Might want to make this a little longer. I'm thinking about, I don't want this too short in height. I want it at least one or two inches. So this is where you lean back in your chair and you maybe three inches. See, how I'm making this a little taller, a little taller in height. You can make this as big or as small as you want. So I could even come down a little bit more. Excuse me, and you can extend your feathers. And again, it's all about your own perspective here. I'm gonna have some really playful, colorful drips coming down, almost all the way down to the bottom from the bird. But you can see the bird is like fairly in the middle of my canvas. Everybody's bird's gonna be different sizes. So if you wanted to add flowers around your bird, or if you wanted to add another hummingbird, you can always do that. Again, in these classes, I we always start with an inspiration and it's really up to you on where you wanna take it. So if you wanna do something a little different along the way, I encourage you to break the rules and go for it. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. Um, it's actually a really good thing when you're inspired to do something on your own. So incorporate whatever you want along the way. And I'll be a little bit more particular about the shape of these feathers. They're kind of curling in a little bit. But I'm not worried about that right now. We're just going for basic form for our bird. So what I want you to think about is one, the length of your wings. Are my wings long enough? Do I wanna make them a little longer? So you can e easily like ex extend your wings to make them a little longer. So for me, I'm leaning back in my chair and I can make my wings a little longer. If anybody needs me to go over any steps for the drawing again, please do not hesitate to ask. So you can kind of play around with, if you wanna make your wings a little longer. For me, I extended this back wing. So it's just a little further than the front one. From my hummingbird's head, fairly happy with it. <laughs> we'll see how it goes when I paint it. That I'm gonna, I can erase some of these marks. The beak is gonna be a black color, but the body um, is gonna be a lighter, you know, blues and things. So we're gonna just gently erase any marks that you don't wanna see. So you can kind of work your way around as you're making modifications. I'm kind of working my way around the inside. Leaning back in my chair, am I happy with the length of my wings? Am I happy with my hummingbird's head and my beak? Look how skinny the end of my beak is. So see, it's like tiny pencil line thin and it just gets a little bit wider by its face.
then you can look at the body. So the beak comes out, the bottom of the chin and the neck. If you wanted to make the chest a little bit bigger, you can manage and play with that chest line. It's really um, fairly continuous. It doesn't really come up and in too much. It's a lot of feathers under here. <laughs> and then the feathers down here, I'm not gonna worry about too much. They're really, I think they'll really come to life more when we are um, really playing with the colors. So keep some of these feathered lines. Think about the length of these feathers on the underside. Erase any lines you may not need. I'm just cleaning up some of my lines that I may not need. And if anyone has any questions or needs me to review any parts of this, do not hesitate to let me know. <clears throat> I may make this wing a little higher. Just a little bit. And we're gonna, so it's, for me, there's a little bit more white space down here below. We're gonna have some of the color drips come down and fill this space visually. So that'd be kind of an abstract part that we do at the end. So as you kind of look around and you're cleaning up your lines, I'm looking at the back side of my bird. For me, it might be a little bit too much of a curve here. I might come in and trim this down. So it's a little bit more straight down. You can use your own eye if you want this to be very curved or a little bit more straight. For me, I'm making mine just a little bit more straight. My bird had quite a big butt. I'm giving it less butt. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll look around the room and see how everybody's doing. Give me a thumbs up if you're like pretty good. You're like, Megan, I have a bird. It has a beak. It has wings, I think. All right, cool. All right. So thank you for the visual cue. Um, so we'll have some fun and we'll play with some colors as our next step. So one of the things I want to acknowledge is the wings are like a blue and purple. So we're going to start out with some blue. Um, so our approach for tonight's class is this. We're gonna be applying color first in a couple different ways. And then we're gonna come back in on top of our bird and we're gonna do a second coat of detail, okay? So have a little patience in that regard. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and take your blue paint and you can put a small a thumbnail, like ladies and gents, you do not need very much paint at all for tonight's class. <laughs> and I'm gonna be really playful with water tonight. Um, so, you can join me or you can go for mixing your own pure colors. Um, and again, any point tonight's class, you want to use your own colors in other areas, feel free to do that. Uh, I have a quick question. Sure. On, the wings, on the wings, you don't have any feathers on there at all? You not just yet. Have to... Nope, yeah. not yet. We will do that very soon. Good question. I, I, I did that, so should I get rid of my pencil lines? No, you can leave the feathers in there, no problem. Okay, yeah, thank you. All good. Um, so what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna grab some of the Phaleo Blue and we're gonna put it on our plate. And I'm gonna have you grab a, a small brush of your choice. I grabbed a number, like I have a number three. Um, many of you, um, you may or may not have a three for me, but there are small gold numbers on the sides of your brushes. This is actually a five, but it's more of like a three. Um, but you can use any small brush that you want. Um, I have a two slash zero fraction brush. Uh, maybe I'll use this one instead. Um, smaller the brush, the better, just because you want to have a little bit of control here. So you can grab um, any, any small brush. It could be the two slash zero fraction brush. You could use the one, two, or the three, whatever you prefer. And we're going to be doing outlining um, for the feathers. So for the lady that just chimed in around the feathers, this is the color you want to use to outline the wings and then we'll do some outlining for some feathers, which is really quite nice. So you always wanna wet your brush before you get started. And I like to spin it so you have a nice fine point. 
And there is no goopy paint on this brush. It's a nice thin coat of paint. And we're gonna start at the back of the bird's neck and we're gonna outline the interior of this wing with blue. A nice thin line of blue paint. And we're not mixing this with white. Sometimes I like to use my pinky to stabilize my hand. But take a deep breath. And this is where you get to settle in to the green portion. And I'm coming up the bird's back of the neck just a little bit, nothing too crazy. And this is where you can play with the edging for the hummingbirds the back of the feather, you can add a few, a few, you know, ripples on where you may want your feathers to be on the back side of the wing. And you're going to repeat this step for the lower wing as well. And then we'll add some significant feather details as well. We'll just do some basic outlining first. And Megan, this is Barb. So I can see like the white dots of the board in the blue. Is that what it's supposed to look like? Nope, just use a little bit more paint. You might have to go over it again. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Yep, you wanna, you might just need a little more paint. For me, I had the same thing happen. I'm painting on um, canvas pa paper tonight, like, uh, sorry, not canvas paper paint painters art paper that's used for acrylic paints. Um, but with your canvas boards, you can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can, you can. Just make sure you use enough paint on your brush to cover that up. And you may need to do a second coat. So if it's not sticking initially, don't worry about it. You can let it dry and go do a second coat for the outline. But I'm outlining both wings with this blue. Take a deep breath. Ah. This is, a little, this is an easy part. You all should just be like embracing this easy step together. <laughs> it's a little meticulous. And we'll do some wing definition with this color as well. I'm also going to outline the back side of the bird. So where its bum is, I call it its bum, it's where its tail feathers are. Just this back line right here is going to be blue as well. If there's one feather. Because what we're going to do is the bird is going to be purple and blue on the right hand side. And as we work our way over, we're going to do greens and yellows and oranges and reds. It's going to be this beautiful transition of color. So fun. And some of you may have put feathers on the bird. So with this small brush, you can add some, some I'll call them feathered segments. <laughs> So um, on this bird, on the lower wing, I'll do the lower wing first. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You don't have to do eight feathers, but what we're gonna do is I'll start down here on the lower side of this wing. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of an outline of a feather. So I'm gonna do a soft, I'm just gonna do lines basically to separate these feathers. And we'll add in texture after. So I'm gonna do little lines and you can kind of round these lines into one another. These are just feather outlines for the wing itself. And they're gonna kind of go out. You can give them a little shape. You can round the edges a little bit. The wings are spreading out so you can see how I'm curving my lines to more horizontally as I work my way up. And they can kind of overlap one another. And this is going to be a great outline that's going to hold the shape of those feathers as we fill them in with some really soft blues and other colors. Now, if you do an outline 
that you don't like. For me, I'm going to have to do a second coat in some places. I am having a little bit of the white background come through, like Barb had mentioned. So just take a minute and just fill those lines in nice and solid. There is no rush. You want these to be nice and solid. So if you wanted to just do a second coat, acrylic paint dries really quickly. I'm just doing an outline. And if you have any extra kind of uh, blue globs that are uh, make it a little wider in one spot or another, I actually have one that happened. I am going to let it dry and then I can touch that area up with white paint. So just know, don't get upset if something happens that you don't like. Just know that you can fix anything with, with a little something or another. So mine, my bird is a little bit of a thick spot right there. I'm just gonna let it dry and I'll touch that area up with a little bit of white paint. But I'm gonna rinse and repeat this step to the back wing as well. <clears throat> and the back wing has one, two, three, four, five. You can do as many as you want. I'm gonna start at the top and the top wing is gonna have a little bit bigger of a section and it's gonna be a little wider towards the top and then it's gonna get a little thinner as it comes down. So you can play with how you wanna shape this feather-like detail on the wings. If you wanna have it wider towards the tip or towards the exterior, you know, outside of the feather of the wing, you could do that. But you want these lines to flow down, to flow down the wing. And again, you can always reshape these wings if you don't like your lines. You can always, uh, always, always use white to, to change the shape of something. So for me, that line up there is a little too wiggly. I can always change the shape. And I may connect these down here, the back of the neck. These are just nice ways to highlight the wing definition. So take a few minutes to play with this detail. And everybody's is gonna look a little different. Mine are a little bit more natural, right? They're not straight. I love playing with non-linear lines because it creates a little bit form of, a, of more of a natural scape. Like I always talk about whenever we paint grass, I'm like, I challenge you to not paint a straight grass. Like I encourage you to have your grass blade bend a little bit. So take a minute, maybe do a second coat on some of these lines. There may be lines that you want to change the shape of or move around. Let those dry and then you can use white paint. So you can see I have a little texture coming to life with my wings. We're using this dark blue to hold the shape, to hold the form of the wing, to hold the form of these feathers. And then we'll be painting a softer blue and a softer purple on the interior of these wings, which is really quite fun. Now in the inspiration, there's kind of rounded tail feathers on the back side of this bird. They're like little U's. I'm going to add a couple of these as well. Like these are feathers. We'll add more of these feathers throughout. So it's going to look kind of funny right now, but it's all right. And then there's one other spot um, that has blue and it's really around just where, where its beak meets the face. So I'm going to do a little bit of blue outlining just along the, the kind of eye area and into the beak. So if anybody wants to paint their beak a little bit of blue, just to, to kind of get some color on there, you could. But I'm kind of grounding the face with a little bit of this shading. So we're really using this darker blue for a little bit of shading because the face is gonna be blue, but it's also gonna be yellow. So I'm using a little bit of this dark blue to kind of highlight some of those main, um, to ground some of those main forms. So if anybody wants to take, again, I'm using one of my smaller brushes, then you can use whatever brush you're most comfortable with. You can always switch your brushes too. If you're using one, you're like, Megan, I'm really not sure if I like this one. <laughs> switch, I, I encourage you to switch. And 
And I just painted a little bit of my beak. I didn't do the whole thing. I'm not too worried about that right now. But this is where we can take it to the next step whenever you're ready. So ladies and gents that wanna try this, I put a little bit of water on my plate and I'm really kind of just swirling my blue paint, my, my paintbrush around in it. So I'm using water to make a diluted blue, kind of like watercolors. And I'm gonna use this as a technique. You can, you can watch me, you can try it, but I'm gonna use this as my color to fill in some of these areas. And I'm gonna fill in right near the lines first. I want the center of these feathers to be lighter. So watch this, I'm gonna go gently and see that's a little, it's a little dark for me. So I might even make this into a little bit more of a lighter blue. So I'll bring this a little closer so you can see it. That blue is really dark for me. I want it to be a little lighter than that. So ladies and gents, I'm gonna take a little bit of my white paint and I'm gonna mix just a tone lighter of a blue. If you wanted to do that with me, you could. If not, no problem. I'm gonna take a little dollop of white, just kind of put it next, next to the blue. <clears throat> and what I might do is I might take a little dollop of this white and kind of mix it with my watery, watery blue te texture here. Ooh, there we go. See how much lighter? I'll spin my palette around a little bit here. See how just lighter that got? Maybe that might be too light, but you know what? It's, it's a starting place. You can always play around with how light or how dark you want this blue to be. In my classes, we always have fun with mixing colors. So I'll always tell you, mix the colors that you like. You can even add a lot more water. So this is more water with a little bit of paint pigment. You can play with that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna outline with a little bit of this lighter blue. We're gonna kind of hold the middle of these feathers a little bit of, oh, with a little white. And we're gonna slowly fill in these feathers. We'll add purple after, but wherever you see this blue, outline these feathers with a little bit of this blue. And this is where it's gonna get really beautiful and really quite fun. So you're gonna follow around the interior of these outlines. You can use your finger to kind of dab and smudge. You could use a corner of a paper towel. This is where you can have some fun. You can always add in a little bit of white too. So this is where I want you to be playful with this part of class. We'll add in some texturing after on top. We're just doing some base colors right now. And my approach is using a little water with your paint and doing outlining the blue outlines that you just did. So kind of following along the interior. You can color in a little bit of the white middle. For me, I'm just, I'm being sensitive to that. I will come in and add a little bit more white. So if you wanted to just paint the entire wings, this light blue, that works too. So you can be as, as artistic or as abstract as you want in filling these wings in. We'll be doing purple kind of on the tips of these wings. So if you wanted to hold white space to add in purple, you could do that. So for me up here, I might hold white space to do purple. See how I'm holding white space on the end of these feathers on the tip of this wing. If you wanted to hold white space for the purple, you could do that. So beautiful. But we will come in and do some white texturing on top for these feathers. So the actual feather texture we'll do with white paint and a similar brush. Smallest brush you have, we'll do the texturing but just come in and, and fill in this bird any way you wish. I'm doing it a little PC so I can see a little bit of white here and there. So you can use your own techniques. You can use as much or as little water as you wish. I'm gonna do a little bit of light blue down the back side of this bird. Beautiful. I'm just doing small kind of swiping brush strokes. There's no um, crazy brush stroke techniques that I'm doing right now. It's just really on how much water you use. <clears throat> I 
And I'm going to use um, a little bit more water. And I'm going to do the hummingbird's face as well. So you may not be here yet, but I'm just going to do a rounded eye area here. So I might make a circle for where the eye is, which is quite fun. The hummingbird's eye is going to be black with some white detail. And then about halfway on its head, I'm just going to do little dashes, little texturing, small little brush strokes that are coming down. Kind of connecting to the wing, just a little bit of blue. Small, gentle sweeps. And then I have a lot of water on my brush. That's why it's so light in color. Doing small textured, I'll bring this a little closer so you can see it. I'm just doing some gentle sweeps. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come about halfway down this chest with some gentle sweeps, because then this is gonna flow into a green. It's gonna be quite pretty. And the top of its head is gonna be yellow and green too. So we're just doing a little bit of blue accenting on its face. And I might use a little bit of a darker blue here. And you can play with where you use a darker blue and where you use a lighter blue. See, I'm using a little bit of a darker blue by its beak and just gently sweeping. I have barely any paint on my brush. Gently sweeping. There we go. And I gently swept that in. And you can see it connected this lighter blue to the back side of the wing. So you want to connect the blue from the bottom of its chest just at the tip of the wing here. And then on the top of its head and on the rest of its body, it's going to be like that greenish um, yellow. It'd be quite pretty. So we're doing our blues first. I'm so excited to see how everyone's art is coming out here. So I'm going to give you all a full minute to play with the blues, but I'm going to remove my spotlight and I'm going to click the gallery view in the top left hand corner. And this is what we call our show and tell. So if there's anyone that is oh so courageous and would love to show off your work, we would love to see it. Miss Meg is thinking about it. All right, Melody, beautiful. Look at that hummingbird. Awesome, gorgeous. Meg's got a fancy background on. <laughs> oh, there's Miss Judith. Beautiful work, ladies. And Melinda, excellent. Very nice. And Sharon. How do you how do you share it? Um, you just turn on your video, Cindy. There's Cladia's and Terry. Oh, Terry did a green background. So cool, Terry. Awesome. Miss Cindy. Oh wow. Very cool. Oh my goodness. You all are so creative. I can't handle it. Oh, there's Miss Mig. Oh, Mig, that's beautiful. Beautiful. So you all are pros at hummingbirds. Who would have thought? <laughs> all right. Thank you all for sharing. Excellent work. So what I'll do is I'll keep an eye on the clock. I think everyone's doing pretty well with the blues. Um, I'll give everyone just another minute to play with the blues. For me, I'm just going to kind of look, is there anywhere I want to fill in? I had like some patchy blues. I might just come in and fill in some of this just ever so softly. I love using a little bit of water and a little bit of a pig pigment just to fill in with a really light blue in some spotted areas. But we're going to do a little purple next. So if anybody wants to like let their blue dry, we can always come back and do more blue. Um. We're going to do the drips at the end. Um, so if anybody's tempted to add the drips now, uh, resist the temptation. Uh, we're going to do all the drips at the end, which will be quite fun. But I'm going to make a purple. Um, purple is blue and red mixed together. So when you're ready, you can make a purple with me. Um, we're going. You won't need very much. Um, and you're going to need a little bit of white paint for your purple as well. So I'm going to mix a purple. So a, a spot of blue would literally do. You're not going to need very much purple at all. And it's going to be very dark when you mix these colors together. That's fine. Just mix them well first and then bring in a touch of white and it's going to lighten it up significantly. So it's going to look like a dark, dark purple. Don't sweat it. Grab a small scoop of your white, mix that in and you'll have a much lighter purple.
Nice. And I'm going to use this purple. I might make it a little more vibrant with a little bit more red. So just take your time to find the right purple. Mine's more of like a, it's kind of a lighter purple. I might make it a little bit, had a little bit more red. In my classes, I always hold time for you to find the right colors that you prefer. And this purple, I'm going to personally mix it with a little bit of water. So it's light, like very light, um, but you can use as much or as little water as you wish. So I'm taking like three or four droplets of water and making this water wash of purple. That's where you don't need much paint pigment at all. And we'll need this water mixture for our, our drop as well, right? This These cool drips that we're gonna do at the end. So you have, so you have a nice, watery purple here and I'll bring it up on the edge so you can see it and I'm going to use this on the far side and you can even make this if you wanted to even add in the inspiration it's, it has even a little bit of a red in it so if you wanted to play with a little bit of purple on the edges here maybe bring it down the top of the feather I might bring in a little bit of red like play with this stuff it's going to be a purple, but it's going to be kind of a reddish purple for me. I'm just going to be playful with art. It's always fun to experiment with how you apply colors. This is a little bit darker of a purple. I'm fine with this. If you wanted to make it lighter, you could. But I'm just doing a little purple on the edges. Paper towels handy if you have a drip. You could embrace a drip into your painting if you wanted to. If you want to go for this purple drip, I know we're going to wait till the end to do colors, but if you wanted to do it, I'm, I'll show you how to do it. I have a lot of water, so I could do it easily. I'm only coming down, I don't know, I'm going to just do a little purple on the edge of these blues. I'm not going to come all the way down because my purple drips are going to be um, from this top wing and then from the, tip, from the tip of the top wing and the tip of the second wing. That's where my purple drips are going to be. And they're going to be really, really light in color. So like a lot, a lot of water. So I'll show you if anybody's courageous. See how watery this is? Let me see if I can get my camera right. This is like a very watery purple. That's what you want for these drips. And I'm going to use a small brush. I'll experiment as the guinea pig here. So I'm going to do a nice kind of dollop. And I'm going to do the drip just to see how if this brush works or not. You might need a bigger brush. Yeah, I think we need a bigger brush for the drip. Let's see. Let's try this brush. See, I'm here to experiment for all of us. <laughs> and this is a number five brush. Let's see how this does for the drip. Oh, it's dripping down the wrong way. Ah, hold on. That's why we have paper towels handy, ladies and gents. Maybe for our drip, we have to like pick up our canvas and direct the drip. We might need to do that. So I'm actually going to let, I'm not going to do the drip right now because it's actually just kind of floating down the whole edge of where I just painted. So that's me testing this out for us is don't do the drip yet. <laughs> just do a little bit of purple on the edges here. And then we're going to shift to the greens. So take your time, add in as much purple on these edges as you wish. Do not do the drip yet because we're going to let it dry. And the reason that the drip is good to have it dry is because right now when I just tried doing the drip on the purple, it kind of followed down the edge of the wing instead of going straight down, which means I need this to be dry so the drip can go straight down. So it was a good experiment. All right, so we're doing base colors. Um, everyone should have some blue and we're gonna go to green next. Now, you can take the yellow I gave you and you can do a small dollop of yellow. Oh, I have this lemon yellow, this is fun. And you can use any small brush that you want. So I'm just gonna use the same brush I've been using. That's working well for me. If you wanted to switch brushes, you could. So a small dollop of yellow. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take a scoop of this yellow and I'm gonna put it in, in a well next to me. So I kind of have two spots for yellow. And I'm gonna take a little scoop of the blue and I'm gonna make green. Woo, look at this green. Can you say vibrant? <laughs> so 
So I want you to have a little yellow and I want you to have a little bit of green. Look at this green. Oh my goodness. So beautiful. Now we're not going to use a lot of green, so don't get too excited. Um, if you wanted to use more green, feel free. I'm going to use minimal amount of green. And I'm going to lighten this. So the name of the game today is I'm using water to create a lighter kind of opacity. So I'm going to put a little water on my brush and I'm gonna mix water with a little bit of green kind of next to this. So this is just water and green right here. And ever so slightly coming, um, we're gonna outline the bird's head with this green, top of the head with green. Look at this, so beautiful. So just like we outlined the hummingbird with blue, we're gonna outline the top of the head with green. And if you wanna put a little green on some of these left feathers, ooh, get a little crazy if you want. And then if you wanna start doing some soft sweeping brush strokes, bringing some green into the belly, just a little green on the belly on the underside of the neck maybe. This is where you can have some fun. We are gonna do more yellows as we come down, but if you wanted to bring some green in here, you could. So maybe a little green on some of these wings, just to start blending the colors over, right? Because we're transitioning, coming into the middle of the bird. And then, uh, this budget, hello, uh, I have a quick question. This budget, um, I did not get go, uh, green at all. I got black. Did you get yellow by what chance? Could I, I have yellow and I have black. Um, mix yellow so, but, and a touch of blue. Yellow and a little bit of blue. Okay, <laughs> thank you. You got it. No problem. Good question. So we're put, putting in a little green here and there. So what else you can do, ladies and gentlemen, is you can do some rounded feathers next to the blue. These are like U shapes. Just maybe four or five, just coming over just a little bit. U shapes. And this is just a little texturing and you can, for me, I'm gonna do some outlines first and then I'm gonna come in and fill this in. I might use yellow to fill in. So if you do just U shapes, we could use yellow to fill in the interior of these feathers. That could be really fun. And so you can see any white space, I'm gonna fill with yellow. So you can see I added a little bit of green to my wings. How fun is that? Just a little touch here and there. I did some green on the underside. We're gonna do a lot more yellow. Um, on the top of its head, if you wanna do a few bit of green on the top of the bird's head, you could. The head is also gonna have a lot of yellow, but the green is a really beautiful accent. I'm not gonna to do too much green because we're gonna do yellow. And I'm gonna be kind of anywhere there's white um, where the green is, I'm gonna fill in with a yellow to help with the blending. So anytime you feel like you are, you want to start with your yellow, I'm going to use water in the yellow paint. This is a very vibrant yellow, like bright yellow. If anybody wants to add any white to this yellow, I'm going to just tame mine down a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of white to my yellow. Look at that. And I put a little bit of water in it. So play with the yellow. You can make this as bright or as calm as you want. If you wanted to use a different color here, feel free. But I'm just going to ever so slightly start to weave in little yellow feathers near the green, kind of filling all those nooks and crannies. And this is so beautiful. Doing gentle sweeps. And I'll bring this a little closer. You all can do this. I know you can. Gentle sweeps. Anywhere I see a little bit, and you can even put it near some of the blue. You can always come in with more blue too. It's not a big deal. 
This is all background color. So we're going to come in and do more texturing. I'm coming in. I'm going to fill in. And I might even use, I'm inspired to use a little bit of orange as well, like on the tail. And you can always come in and blend colors. So if you feel like your blues and your and your um, greens aren't blending, you can come in here and you can bring some blue into your green if you want to. So you can play with how these tail feathers look, how this blending is. And you can do the same with the yellow and the green. <clears throat> so we're doing a transition of colors here. We're getting lighter as we go over. So I do want the middle of the bird to be more yellow. And then we'll start to bring in a little bit of orange. So this is all transitional. And that's why it's nice having these colors right on your palette. Because if, for me, if I'm ready for my orange, I can take a little bit of my red. And I can take a little bit of my yellow and look at, I'm, I have an orange. You can play with your red and your yellows and make your orange. And I you have can, a question. Of course. This is, this is Donna. Hi, Donna. Um, I've tried to get a green and all I get is really dark green or it turns almost gray. How did you get that green? The um, first green. This green right here, yes. um, it was, it's like 85% yellow with a touch of blue. Okay. I probably put too much green in. Too much blue. Maybe. I have an olive and I have a dark green and I couldn't get that color of green. <laughs> try, uh, try like 85% yellow with a tiny, start with just a touch of blue, like a little, little bit. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. It's tricky. <laughs> So what you're gonna do is um, whenever you're ready to incorporate, um, for me, I um, you can, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna bring some of the yellow down my tail feathers here, but I'm inspired to bring in a little bit of orange already, but bring down the colors down these feathers. So we are gonna be, and I'll just pull the, the lens back. We're gonna be doing reds over on this far side. So I just put a little bit of red on so you can start to see the transition. Um, but what I want you to do is, is use your yellows and fill in, you know, one of these tail feathers. Let's see, maybe this tail feather here. And you can just use this bright yellow too. So you can use a combination of like the bright yellow and this lighter yellow. I came in and I actually added the yellow as is, and it's really nice and punchy. Like it has a nice brightness to it. And I'm using it to add in like a little bit of texture. So I'm putting a little bit of brighter yellow on top, just little textures. And we're just going to continue to work our way across. So for me, I'm happy with my greens. I'm using my yellow near the green to kind of fill in any of that white space. I'm kind of creating some fun feather texture within this space. We're going to come in and add some more definitive lines. And I'll show you what that means in just a minute. But we're filling in that background color right now. So these feathers on the bottom are gonna kind of change and evolve in color as you work your way across. So you're gonna have an orange feather and you're gonna have a red feather. I'm showing you just as an example. And you might not even, you can do some lines for some texturing. So yep. play with how and where you add color, but really it's transitioning, play with the yellow, add in as much yellow as you wish. And these are all background colors. So these aren't the final details, ladies and gents. So don't worry if you're like, Megan, this is not, these do not look like feathers. Don't worry, we're gonna add in more feather-like detail. <laughs> You basically want to transition from yellow to orange to red as you work your way over. And it's actually going to have a little bit of, um, you can even do a thin blue line over here on the edge of the red feather just to ground the edge of the body. And I'll go over some of these details, but I just want you to acknowledge ways of grounding the front of that bird. 
but we'll come in and do more feather outlines in just a few minutes. But it's just getting some base colors in here. And then we'll add more of that finer detail after. So some of this may look like flat colors. That's okay for the step that we're on. But I will show you some techniques on how you can fill in these backgrounds. So as an example, if I have this yellow handy, you can use like little brush strokes. If I grab a small brush, you can kind of, you can start with some of the fun texture if you wanted. So what does that look like? So if I grab some yellow and I'm on top of this, you can do kind of um, some diagonal kind of thin lines and they're not even thin, but you can kind of start to shape little lines for these feathers by going on the left and the right side, like those angled feathers, the angled texture. You could play with some of that if you wanted to. Again, I'm here to guide you. This is where you can interpret and go at your own pace. But it's fun to play with these colors. For me, I see pencil marks in some areas. So for wherever the paint is dry, I can always come in and erase pencil marks. So for me, I'm gonna come in, wherever I didn't paint that there may be a pencil mark, I can come in and just erase that. I may use pencil um, with art. You can use any type of medium to add texture. I might add pencil tonight. I might use pen. I might use, it depends if you have a really fine brush. That's the nice thing about these classes is that you can really kind of go at your own pace and use whatever, um, anything you want really. But I'll show you what this, this texturing detail is on top of these lower feathers. I'm grabbing a little bit of red with a fine brush and I'll show you what this feathering looks like. So it kind of comes out and down like little tiny feathers. See this? This is very, in the picture, it's much more soft, but I'm just showing you what these, this texturing could look like. Gentle sweeps. I could even blend this in ever so slightly so it's not so dramatic, leaving a little bit of a line in the middle. You could even kind of blend in so it's not so obvious. And you can even outline some of these feathers down the bottom with a little bit of red. So they're nice and clean and crisp. So the red is a great color to use to outline an area or two. So I'm using red to outline some of these feathers especially where they overlap on the bird. So as an example, this feather is overlapping that feather. See that line I just put in right there? That helps show overlap, that there's actually a feather there. I'm gonna do a little bit of a line over here in red near the orange feather to show that that's actually a feather. So these are details you can play with. And add tiny little lines. I'm doing little orange textured lines. So this is the name of the game with tonight's class is playing with these details. And taking your time. I always like to talk about patience. You know, art takes time to, to dial in these details. You could make the end of these feathers rounded. You could make them pointy. I just did a pointy one just to show you. I actually think I like the rounded feathers on the bottom better. In the inspiration, they're more rounded, but whatever goes. Again, if I wanna reshape this bottom of this feather, ladies and gentlemen, we can use white paint at any time to change the dynamic of these feathers. So don't worry about it if they are not exactly the way you want them to be. I'm gonna have fun with a little bit of purple over here on the side. And again, you can make a light purple if you wish. 
I'm just having fun with what I have here. And I use a, a blue outline on the left side of this feather as well. And if you don't want to see those little lines, I'm not really crazy about the ones I just did. You can take a small paper towel and you can dab something. You can kind of dab it um, while it's still wet and you can kind of get something up. So it's okay to change your mind. Artists change their mind often. And I like talking about that because I feel like people that don't paint a lot, you beat yourself up far too much <laughs> around something not being the way that you want it to be. So I want you just to play with these feathers. For me, I, I, um, I'm not incredibly happy with the color of this lighter yellow. So I'm gonna come up here with just a little bit more of a vibrant yellow and just kind of trickle that in here and there. So it's okay to change the colors of your bird in different places as you go. For me, I'm adding a little bit more of this orangish red up here. I just wasn't crazy about that lighter lemon yellow. This bird looks pure out of the tropics. I don't know if anybody else has one of those, but <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so great. We'll play with the texture on the underside. For me, I'm making mine a little bit darker because that's just what I'm inspired to do tonight. This is where I want you to make this bird your own. We are gonna add a black eye to the bird. We'll do that in just a minute. But have some fun with bringing this bird to life in all your own ways. I'm looking around at all the edges of my bird's feathers. Just kind of playing with where I want to see more of a definitive edge, where I'm happy. So it's really a reflective process. For each of us. And it's okay to let layers dry and come back to an area. That's something we do a lot in these classes um, is that we'll let an area dry. For me, I'm, I want to bring in a little bit of the blue into the front side of this feather just to match. So we talk a lot about balance in my classes, balance of color. So there's blue and purples over here on the right. I'm inspired to bring in just a little bit of blue on the front side of this feather. Just a touch, just to add a little bit of that cooling factor. And for me, it's just gonna help ground one space with another, which is quite fun. And I might use a little bit of this blue just to ground the eye area. And I'm gonna add a black eye here in a minute. So we're all at different steps. Again, these are just some background colors. So just to talk through some of our next steps, play with kind of mixing these colors in. <clears throat> it's quite fun. It's, and then we're gonna add a small black eye for our hummingbird. And then we'll do some white highlighting. So the, the next, you know, few minutes, I want you just to dial in your background colors because we're going to add some white highlighting for these feathers as a next step. Um, so play with your colors. I'm going to add a black eye. The eye is going to be floating. So I don't want it to touch the edge of the head. I want it to just have a little, a little bit of space around it and a small black eye. And I'll bring mine a little closer. See how it's not touching the quite of the top? It's smaller than the size of a pea. And this is where a hummingbird will start to come to life a little bit by adding an eye. And we'll do a little white dot on the interior of the black eye, but we're not gonna do that yet. We're gonna let the black dry first. So for me, I'm being patient. I'm letting my hummingbird dry. I might use my, my thin black brush to do the, the beak of the bird. Or is it a no? Somebody probably knows officially what this is called. And I'm using a very thin brush, taking my time. You could do this as a, 
as a dark blue if you didn't want to use black. This bird is right out of the 70s. <laughs> All right. So fun. So I'm going to keep an eye on the clock. I'm going to give everyone a two solid more minutes just to reflect on your bird and make sure it's really painted and, and colored in all the ways that you want. We're going to add in white detailing next for a little bit of extra texture um, and highlighting for the wings and for the feathers. So just really get your colors dialed in in all your areas. And if anyone has any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If folks are running a little slower, don't worry. I'll always encourage you to go at your own pace. Tonight's class is reported. So don't sweat it. You don't need to keep up with us. I want to make sure I get through this in an hour and a half or so just to be mindful of folks' time. But I will always encourage you whenever you're in our classes is to go at your own speed, no matter what. Always, always. So as you're doing that, I'm just going to check the chat and grab some of the details there that you've requested so I don't miss any of it. And if anyone needs any close up on your eye again, could you hold that up one more time? Absolutely. His eye. Of course. Okay, that is saved. Let me go back to my Zoom window. Green, green. All right, here we go. See so yeah, there's a little space around each sides of it. And if you haven't yet, like I encourage you to stand up, take a couple steps back from your artwork and reflect on your work from far away. You'll notice something that you'll wanna do or change or modify. So for me, I've noticed, even by just pausing for a minute, one of my feathers in here needs a little love. I don't know what it needs, maybe a little bit more outlining. So you might need to highlight another feather a little bit more, use a little red, use another color. We wanna see these, the edges of these, of these lower feathers, that's important. There we go. That's helpful. And ladies, I, I, I don't I wish I had a lighter purple. I feel like this this pinky purple. Um we don't have a pinky purple with us tonight. We're using this red, but what you could do is you could add a little red and uh, purple together to get more of a pinky purple. Let's try that together. Let's see if we can get this color kind of dark. Let's add a little bit of white. Let's see if we can get a more of a pinky purple to include. Sort of. It's more of a rose. So it's always fun to play with colors in these classes. I always try to hold time for that. This is more of a rose color, but I might tuck in a little bit of this in here. And with, with acrylics, it dries quickly. And the nice thing about that is you can kind of layer more colors in areas where you wish. So for me, I'm kind of tucking in another coat of um, some texture on some of these feathers. But again, just base coats. Maybe I'll come over on my purple and add in a little bit of this reddish pink. So I mixed pink and purple together. Sorry, I mixed red and purple together. And I got, um, and I mixed white and I came out a little bit lighter. So if anybody wants to try that. I'm just adding that into some spots on the edges of my wings. Just a little bit brighter. I love this brighter effect. I'll bring this a little closer so you can see it. No, it's so dark. Sometimes adding a little bit of a lighter color. Adding a little bit of white. And you can always let something dry and lighten something up. So don't worry too much about that. And I'm just, I love adding just a little touch of this purple, this pink to some of these top wings. 
kind of maybe bringing some of that back in here. Just helps balance the colors out. And I did add a tiny line of blue to the underside of the belly right here. So if anybody wants to try that, you can. And I'll add a little bit more just to show you what that looks like. Mm -hmm. so, and let's see here. I just got some background noise. So I'm going to look around the room, make sure everybody is muted. Let's take a look. I think we're doing good on that round. So with a little bit of blue, let's see if I have any left here. I think I mixed it with something. You can do a, um, a very thin line of blue on the bottom of the bird's chest, kind of coming down. Like we outlined the wings blue. You can use a little bit of this darker blue on the front side of the tail. Look at it just grounds that whole side of the bird. You could even bring it up a little higher if you wanted to. This really allows the bird just to jump off the page. And I'm using a really thin brush. I think I'm using the two slash zero, but you can use the number one brush. Just, it's really about having a nice fine point on your bristles. And we're going to use the same thin tech, this thin technique for the, the white paint in just a minute. So before we do the white paint, we'll um, we will we'll do the drips <clears throat> next. This will be quite fun. We'll do the drips and then we'll do some of the white detail. So the white detail we'll do on the wings and we'll do it on the eye. So get an eye in, get a black eye in if you if you haven't yet. And we'll do we'll do the drips and then we'll do the white paint. The drips will be fun. <laughs> So maybe we'll do the red drips first or the reddish pinkish drips and we'll work our way over in color, which could be nice. And I'm gonna have you grab for a brush. Let's see here. Grab your number five brush. Which one is this? Let's see here. Which one is this one? I would grab a number five or a number four that I sent you. If you don't have a five or a four, grab one that looks like this. And we're gonna do the water trick next. So you want to have a lot of water with your reddish pink, whatever the one you want is. So take two or three or four dollops of water and you want this to be very liquidy. So I'm gonna bring some up here just so you can see it. If I put a little bit on my skin, you can see. Okay, I probably need more water. That's pretty thick in pigment. I want a, a little bit a little pigment because I want to see through it. So what it could be is, is, and I'll do an experiment. Wish me luck, ladies and gentlemen. Is maybe I swirl it around on my palette, wipe some of it off. Maybe I dip my brush in my water cup. All right, wish me luck. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom side, I'm going to push and I'm going to get a drip, hopefully. Let's see. I drip down. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> So that's a really thin drip. That's okay. Let's let me experiment. Ready? I'll be the guinea pig. Let me experiment with a bigger brush. Let's see if this gives us a bigger drip. Oh boy. But that's think, just water. There's no paint on that brush. It's water and paint. So I put paint and water first. And I'm gonna use a bigger brush just as an experiment here. So I am getting, and it's dripping down for me. Um, I'm going to let that one dry. Let me just wipe this off really quick. So I'm wiping this off. So if you want a nice thin um, brush stroke, you can use a tiny brush. I'm going to go to my orange really quick with this bigger brush to see if I can get a wider drip. Nope, they're all going to be skinny drips. So <laughs> I'll bring this a little closer. So you can use the big, this is with the big brush and the small brush. I got these tiny drips. <clears throat> you, you can do the tiny drips. If you don't wanna do the drips tonight, that's totally fine, but it's really, it's a little bit of paint pigment. And then I actually took my brush and I dipped it in my water and I kind of wiped off one drop and then I went in for the secondary drop um, with the, from the water cup. So the water cup actually gave me 
quite a bit of what I needed. So we're going to do red, orange, yellow. There's my yellow. Sometimes we just need to be a little courageous and take some risks here. Be a little bit uh, adventurous with our dripping. I'm going to do green. So I'm getting a little bit of paint on my brush. And I used to one of the bigger brushes. It doesn't matter. Dipping my brush in my water cup, wiping off one drip. And then going for another one. So fun. And then there's a little bit of splatter too. So if anybody wants to get a little crazy, you can take your brush with the water and do like a little bit of a pull back and splat with the paint. Now I just did green. You can barely see it, but there's like little green specks on it, which is kind of fun. Um, you could also um, hold your canvas down and like do some drops if you wanted like more bigger drops. So I'll do a couple of these just to like experiment. Ooh, look at that. And you could do legit drops if you wanted to try this. Oh boy. So I'm gonna just show you what a few of these drops look like. I'm gonna keep mine flattened down and I'm just gonna do a couple of these. So I did my red, yellow, red, orange, yellow, and green. I'm just gonna do a few drops with it flat. That's why you can't see my thing. And I'm going to take my big brush and just kind of squeeze it a little bit and just do a couple of drops on the left, on the right. Oh my gosh. And this will dry pretty quickly, but I'm, I'll show you a little bit of what this looks like without letting it slide down. It looks really fun. So if anybody wants to be courageous and do this with me, you can. If not, I totally understand that. But sometimes it's fun doing something a little different. And the yellow's fun. I'm kind of using my finger a little bit. Like I'm holding my brush in my hand like this and I'm using my finger. I'm dipping my brush in my water. And this is giving me a really light. Look at that. So cool. All right. And then I'm going to go to my orange. I'm really using the water quite a lot. Here's my orange. There's a drop. I don't know how long this is actually going to take to dry like this. So we'll just play with it a little. You can also use your finger, ladies and gents, to do like little dot lips. Look at that. So cool. Let's do a little bit of red. You could also like do a couple of like aggressive drops, like kind of flick your brush down, downward as you're holding it flat. Kind of neat all experimentation. So I'm going to hold this flat for a minute. Maybe I'll blow some of these around. Ooh, that's kind of fun too. Maybe spin it and blow. If you want some stretches, that could be kind of neat. And by spinning your canvas, You get them in all different directions, which is kind of fun. So you could be as courageous as I am, or you can just um, <laughs> keep it simple. But I am here to offer you options. And this is a really fun, fun turn for tonight. Um, so I did my, my drips down. I'm going to wait for these to dry. It's kind of fun turning your canvas to kind of get these splatters in different ways. Some of you may have tried that, some of you may not have. If you have any splatters that you just don't like, just know you can always um, you can always um, put paint over them. So anything can be covered with white paint. But it's kind of neat. It's kind of creating this really unique scene. And I'll do my blue in just a minute, but you can see it's kind of drying a little bit. 
kind of fun. So I'm going to get my blue ready and I'm using my bigger brush for this. It just held more water. So you can consider that. I'm going to do my my blue drippings once everything else is fairly dry and the blue is going to kind of come off one of these lower wings. And this is going to drip down. Very cool. And I have a purple kind of colored drip that's going to come down from the top wing. Go, 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 go. Kind of neat. So with art, it's fun to do something fearless every once in a while. And this is super fun, really different. And you can fill in, I have some gaps um, where there's colors, like um, where I don't have, um, like I need, I need a, maybe another drip in here. And you can let any of this dry to do more dripping. But we're going to, we'll do some of the white detail after. So you can either lay your canvas down flat. I'll prop mine up just a little bit. Let me put my brushes down. See if I can prop it here. Perfect. I have it propped up. <clears throat> it's going to be good to let it dry. Anywhere you want to take your paper towel and like um, dab something dry, you can do that. So the corner of a paper towel can really dry something quickly, which is really nice. So for me, um, anywhere on my bird that is wet, I'm just going to dry it ever so slightly. So I'm just going to do a little bit of um, dabbing. So maybe near my bird's eye, maybe on some of these wings, because I'm going to do that white detail next. but it was fun to do those strips. Has anybody tried those yet? Is anyone being courageous? I'd love to hear how it's going for you. You can also get as aggressive. You could flick with your finger. If you wanna get really messy, you could kind of dip your finger um, in your water and kind of flick purple on different areas. You could keep it clean and simple. For me, I like the balance of color. So for me, I don't have a lot of blue. I don't have very many blue drips. So I'll do a couple just basic kind of blue drips next, just to kind of balance out all the other colors and that might warm it all up for me. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of blue on my brush again. And I, it's watery blue paint basically. And then for me, I want a couple big drips with my blue. So I'm gonna dip my brush in my water to get the big drop. That's where you get the big drops is dipping your brush in water with a little bit of the paint on it. And you can kind of go up and down, some like aggressive movements. You could flick your brush, kind of like if you've ever been into my classes and you have stars, those galactic stars in your sky. Okay, I did a little bit of blue to balance out. I'm gonna lay this flat for a minute. Maybe I'll blow some of this blue around. Spin my brush, spin my palette. It's kind of fun spinning your canvas around to move the paint in different areas. And look at that, I just got a really cool blue splatter above my bird's eye. I was not planning on that, but cool things happen sometimes when you are being playful. And I totally respect if anybody doesn't want to do, you know, any crazy splatter like this, but it's kind of fun to try. And if you have a lot of heavy paint anywhere, use your paper towel and just like, blot it up a little bit because you're still going to see the pigment. And it's so cool, actually. So if anywhere you have wet, I'm just dabbing up any of the wet paint and it makes it's a lot less subtle. I, I'm, so I'm dabbing up some wet paint and the colors are still there, but it's a subtle design that we've created in the background. And I'll bring this a little closer so you can see. Amazing technique. If anybody wants to try that, try dabbing. Look at this. I dabbed all of my wet spots in the background and it gave me a really beautiful 
background design where it's not dripping at all. And this is all almost dry. All these drip spots are now almost dry because I just dabbed up any remaining wet paint. Now, one additional thing as we're painting together, I'm inspired to outline some of my feathers in this navy, in this dark blue. That's really gonna allow the bird to jump off the page. Now we have a lot of dark blue around this top part, but for me, I'm inspired to outline like the bottom of these bird feathers down here with light blue. So if anybody wants or that light blue, this darker blue, if anybody wants to do that with me, you can. You don't have to if you don't want to. You can also watch me do it and say, Megan, I don't know if I want to do that or not. <laughs> so you can let me be the guinea pig. But I'm going to show you what this looks like. This is just what I'm inspired to do tonight. This is where you're going to take your painting in your own ways. Always incorporate your own styles and your own ideas. But I'm just using a little bit of this blue just to highlight the bottom edge of this of this hummingbird. I want this bird to jump off the page. And I just did a little bit of outlining and it just really kind of gives this overall continuous shading for the bird to jump right off. And I'm going to just do a little bit of this on the top side of the bird's head. All right. So we're gonna do the white detail as one of our final steps, but I wanted to pause and look around the room and see how this is going for everybody. <laughs> All right, so we're a little courageous tonight to try something new. I respect anyone for trying it or not. Melody's smiling. You might be giggling in person, not sure. Ooh, very cool ladies and gents. Oh, Sharon, you went for it. Nice job. Barbara, beautiful colors. Awesome. Cladia, oh my gosh. Look at look at the colors on these hummingbirds. I'm so impressed. There's Miss Barb. Barb, those look like great drips. I can see part of it. <laughs> You're muted, but um, unmute yourself, Barb, and say hello. Oh, there's Barbara Snow. Let's see Barbara's again. Ooh. All right. Barb, you are new to tonight's class. Again, a warm welcome. How's this going for you? It was fun. It, it probably does not look professional, but it's mine. <laughs> so I'm excited about it. It's still pretty it. wet. Yeah, I know. If it's really wet, um, I took a paper towel and I kind of, I literally like, I, I kind of like, I just, wipe, I didn't wipe it. I just like da um, dabbed it and it really took the, it really took the wetness on, but the color is all there. It's incredible what it, because it stuck right to it. But with canvas, it might be a little different. So who knows? Um, very nice, ladies and gents. Um, I'll, I'll look at you all. Um, tell me, um, give me a thumbs up if you're ready for the white detail. And give me a one more minute if you need more time. Okay, I think many of you are probably ready for the white detail. Thank you for the cue. I appreciate that. So I'm going to get a nice clean dollop of white paint on my, on my palette. Mine's a little tainted with blue and red and stuff. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to find the smallest brush I have. So the smallest brush I may have sent you, grab that one, with the most finest point you can find. And we're going to do some white highlighting together as a group. And I definitely need, I might be able to use this white, maybe. So the first part of white we're going to do is we're going to give our bird's eye a little, a little eyeliner. So we're gonna, I'll spotlight my view for everyone. What we're gonna do first is um, on the underside of the bird's eye, we're gonna do a white line, kind of going up halfway. A little, a, a little under eye eyeliner for our, our bird. And we're gonna do a tiny white dot on the interior of the eye. So white eyeliner on the underside of the bird's eye and a tiny white dot. Excellent. Now with the same brush, <clears throat> we're going to 
in the middle of the, each of these birds' feathers, so the, I'll start on this forward feather, this forward wing. In the middle, we're going to do um, a very, you don't need very much white paint on your brush. So I'm going to spin the brush on my palette. So I don't have very much white paint on it at all. It's not too thick in paint. And in the middle of this, of this feather, of the first feather, I'm going to do gentle sweeps. Um, left, right, left, right, just to create a little bit of texture. So you can hardly see this, but it's just a little bit of lighter texture coming down in the middle. And this is just adding a little bit of brightness. I need to get a little bit more white paint. My white paint is like a little pinkish and it's not standing out as much as I'd like it to. <clears throat> We're just gonna do a little bit of soft white detail on the interior of each feather. So with the tip of your brush, you could do gentle sweeps. And I will get my paint and I'll bring this nice and close again. And so just gentle sweeps, kind of going to the left and to the right. This just will give the bird's feather a little bit of texture. Like these are actual little feathers that are part of that bigger feather, right? Just a little bit of texture. And you could do as much or as little of this as you like. This is all just final touches and details. And sometimes in this inspiration, um, you can see that there's just a line instead of feathers. So I'll do a line just to show you what a line looks like. I'm just gonna do a line maybe for the top other feathers. You can do the texturing if you want, but I'm just gonna do a nice simple line in the middle of each of these feathers. That works too. So you don't need to do the texturing if you don't want. I'll just do a line in the middle of each. And this adds a little bit of highlighting to the feather detail. And I'm staying right in the middle of each of these. And these are the details that we take the time to do because they're really going to bring our birds to life quite a bit. So there's just a couple of single lines. What you could do is, is you could do some gentle sweeps on the underside of some of these white lines. You wanted to add additional texture on the underside, maybe you add a couple of gentle sweeps. The softer your bristles touch the canvas, the, the lighter and the tinier the line will be. So I'm doing just a couple of lines on the underside of some of these. This is feather texture. But you can see the, the lighter color is helping with the contrast. You're starting to create depth of an object. The darker, the darker wing edging is creating the shading and the lighter on top is creating or the lighting is hitting on the top of the wing, top of these feathers. It's highlighting those details. You can play with adding um, a little bit of white texturing on the underside of the hummingbird's chin if you wanted to add any light texturing around the eye or on the underside of some of these colors. So I'm just doing soft, gentle sweeps, maybe on the wing, the top of the wing, coming over. It's absolutely up to you. So play with how you want to incorporate some of the lighter texturing. And I'm gently going to bring in a little bit of the lighter texturing for some of these feathers on its rear. Remember we talked about some of these feathers. 
You can use this lighter color to highlight some of the shape and the form. So these U's, right? Remember we talked about doing these U-shaped feathers? You can use this to outline to highlight some of this U shape, or maybe it's an L, whatever you want. I'm just, I'm, I'm being mindful, I'm being, um, being open to where I add a little bit of a lightness, but I'm gonna add this lighter line to the center of these feathers down at the bottom too. Just a tiny light line. And I may add a little bit of gentle texturing to create a feather look. So gentle feathers maybe coming from the left and the right. Those bows, those gentle feather-like brush strokes sweeping to the left and sweeping to the right. If you paint something you don't like, you can always paint over it. Don't worry. I'm just, I'm having fun. That's why we're here. <laughs> we're here to have fun. If I paint something I don't like, I can just say, hey, I'll put some red over that. Or, hey, I'll put some blue over that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> If it's a smile, don't forget to, to check your posture. I might put a little bit of, you can add this white texturing anywhere on these bird's feathers. So maybe on the head, you have a little bit of extra white texturing, maybe behind the eye. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of resource links for everyone as you're working on these final touches. So AARP Vermont, again, we wouldn't be here without them tonight. Um, so I wanted to say a big thanks again for having us. Um, if you're new, we do have these classes monthly. Um, they tend to sell out quickly. So what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna drop the link in the chat on where the AARP events are listed and um, the classes are not yet listed for October. However, they will be in the next couple of weeks. So feel free to um, click the link that I just shared for the ARP upcoming events. They have a lot of other events outside of my painting classes, but um, I encourage you to attend another class if you're interested. Um, so you can maybe bookmark their events page. Um, I highly would recommend that. And I'll drop one other link in the chat. Um, I am always looking for your feedback um, from tonight's class. So if anyone um, is open to leaving some feedback um, for tonight's class, I did leave a second link where I would love to hear how this goes for you. All right. And if anyone would like a recording from tonight's class, feel free to drop a note in the chat window. I'll be sure to grab all of those chats before the end of class tonight. But again, two links in the chat, the AARP upcoming events, uh, the paint class is not yet listed, but it will be soon. And um, if you'd like to share some feedback with me on your experience tonight, I would love that. But until then, I would love to see how your work has evolved. Um, if anyone needs any support with final details, please let me know. I'll hold mine up nice and close. You're gonna get to a point, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be like, I think I'm done, or I think I'm almost done. <laughs> and that's okay. But here's a, here's a final of mine. Um, we are looking to build the AARP like artist community, like a gallery of all your work. It's always so much fun to see how everyone does and look back on that. So um, my website is paintandsipvt.com. So send me, um, send, me a link, send me an email with your painting. Uh, I'd love to see it. And um, we, can, we can share it in our gallery. Um, but most importantly, I'm going to remove the spotlight on me and we're going to put this into gallery view and everybody can take a look at everybody. So that's one of the most fun parts of this. <gasps> Mig, look at that. Oh, my goodness. All right. You all can look around. Here comes Miss Stella. 
Oh, Stella, well done. Beautiful, ladies and gentlemen, look at these hummingbirds. Oh, Terry was inspired for the flower too. Excellent. Miss Barbara, what did you all think about this inspiration? I give this like a 10 star. I thought this was really fun. I don't know, maybe I'm feeling a little crazy, but. <laughs> cool. Miss Barbara Snow, Miss New the New Barb, Melinda, Judith is working on it. Wonderful. Melody, nice work. You all did really well with the, the beak of the of hummingbird. You know, the skinnier, the better. I feel like you all got the length down and and um, you nailed it quite well. But um, I do want to thank everyone for coming. Um, if anyone has to leave, feel free. But thank you for sharing your work. Sonia, your drips were really good, girl. I think yours are better than mine. <laughs> thank you, Megan. Thank Great you all for coming. Always. Love it. I love it. Well, I'm, I hope, I thank you all for coming. Um, again, I would appreciate any feedback um, oh, on the shared link. But I hope you all had fun and please let me know if I can help you with any final final touches uh, for your artwork tonight. I'll hang around for a few. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you had fun tonight. Bye, Meg. Thank you. Marie. Oh, Thank wonderful. You. Thank you so much for joining, Barb. I hope to see you again. Okay. All right. Marie did wonderful. So fun. And one of the nice things about this is you can kind of like set it aside and you can always come back to it and always make a change. Brax, thanks so much for coming. I'm glad you had a nice time. I look forward to seeing everyone's work. Ooh, Bridget, look at the colors. Well done. Beautiful. Quite done yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> your, your beak is good too. Your, your shaping of your leaves, of uh, your wings came out really nice. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. I was wondering if I would, but I liked it. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. I'm glad you joined us tonight. All right. So I'll hang out for a few minutes. If anyone has any questions, let me know. I had a lot of fun with this one. I hope you did too. Now, anyone watching the video um, as a recording, don't hesitate to comment below or contact me with any questions. And, and folks that are live on the call still, feel free to reach out. Uh, my contact information is on this piece of paper that I shared with you. So if you need any help, if you have a, a boo-boo you don't know how to fix, let me know. I can help you. But thank you again for being here. And I hope to see you all next month. Take care. Thank you.